It's good to be here today to come together and study another portion of God's Word. Joe, I got up at 3 o'clock this morning. You said 5 o'clock. I was up. And as nervous as I do get, it's still a positive thing to force me to do. To get up and speak for just a few moments from the Word of God. Remember Lot's wife. Now, what are some of the thoughts that come to your mind when you talk about the story, Lot and his family? He didn't really pick the best place to go and live, did he? Terrible, terrible place. Sodom and Gomorrah. He was challenged by some angels to come and say, you've got to get out of here. Lot, you and your wife, y'all got to go in your family. I believe it was him and his wife, a couple of daughters, and I believe the scriptures say sons-in-law. And when you read in Genesis 19, I think it's broken down into three, three ways. First, verses 1 through 22, God is talking to Lot, say, you got to do this, you got to go. The second part, 23 through 29, I believe this is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone. Had to be a terrible event. And a side note on, on, on top of that, Lot, his wife, and his two daughters left. And I mentioned just a moment ago that there were two sons-in-law. You realize they did not go? They felt that what was being said to them was foolish, was a joke. And I believe they lost their life at that time. And then the third part, verses 30 through 38, is a, a, another terrible thing that happens in the Scriptures. We won't go into detail on that, but the daughters were concerned about the family name, if you will and did a very terrible thing with their father. Well, for a moment, I want to talk about Lot's wife. 17 through 30, 32. Let me just read these here. It says, Likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But on the day the Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone upon heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, when it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, in that day, he who is on the housetop and his goods are in the house, let him not come down to take them away. And likewise, the one who is in the field, let him not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Jesus is speaking to his disciples, trying to convince them, to relay to them, it is important to live your life in Christ before it is everlastingly too late and they lose their soul in judgment and he says remember Lot's wife and every time I hear this story and I think of this what a terrible way to go Make sure I'm pressing the right buttons and getting this done. Lot's wife perished, although she was the wife of a righteous man. I'm not saying that she wasn't righteous. I think she was. But she made a mistake by not listening to a simple, simple instruction. You remember what it was? Don't look back. Would you be tempted to turn around and look back at what is going on to Sodom and Gomorrah? Just think about that. 2 Peter 2, 7 and 8. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, 
for the righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. And as I was reading this, this thought just came to my mind. This was terrible, wasn't it? Are you seeing that prevalent today in the day's world as we see it in the news? Do we see it in our television, in our programs? You see it everywhere. It wasn't different then. It's pretty bad back then, and it's pretty bad now. And I just thought of that as I was going through this set of verses here. And just, I wanted to bring that to you. Something we need to think about here. She was responsible for her actions. Can you agree with that? For every man shall bear his own burden, Galatians 6, 5. We're going to be responsible for our conduct at the end of time. We will give an account of what we did, whether it be good or bad. Sharon is not going to make it to heaven on my account. And likewise. And as we stand before God in His judgment seat, He will pronounce that judgment. We have got to be ready. She was warned of the danger. She was warned of the danger. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside. And he said, escape for your life. Don't look behind. You will, or you nor stay anywhere in the plain. Get out of there. Escape to the mountains, lest you be destroyed. She was warned. You got to get out. And a side note, so were the, so were the sons in law. They made a bad choice. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the words spoken all through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression or sin and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was conformed to us by those who heard Him. The question I have here is, what about us? We hear the word. Are we going to receive the just reward? We're going to reap what we sow. We are warned of danger and told what the Lord expects of us. Speaking of Moses, Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet, Jesus, like me from your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every soul who will not hear the prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people, Acts 3, 22 and 33. I believe pre Peter is preaching a sermon here starting in, in verse 11 of Acts chapter 3, warning them. And I believe he was put in prison pretty shortly after that. People do not like to hear of soul's condition. A lot of times it was not taken very kindly in the scriptures, if you will. Paul here talking to the Ephesians elder, elders. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. We are warned on a constant basis. All the time. For those of us who are up here preaching, those of us who are teaching, those that you talk to, it's always put out there. There is a warning. God is coming. Therefore, watch and remember. Paul did it for three years with tears. Do we understand 
our condition. Do we understand the significance of one command? Don't look back. And every time I hear that, I, how many chances did she get? Zero chances. And then I got to thinking again, what was it? Was it a glance like this? Or was he just kind of, you know, what was it? It doesn't matter, does it? She looked back. She did make an effort to be saved, didn't she? She left. She left with her husband and her two daughters. So she, yeah, she was on the right track. She was leaving. She was fleeing. She did make an effort to be saved. And while he lingered, the men took hold of his hand, his wife's hand, and the hands of the two daughters. The Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. So it came to pass when they had brought them outside that he said, Escape for your life. Do not look behind nor stay anywhere in this area in the plain. Escape to the mountains lest what? Ye be destroyed. Genesis 19, 16 and 17. What thought can I come out of that one? Can I bring it out of that one? But Jesus said to him, No one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Luke 9, 62. A note or two on that. As Christians, we need to be careful that we don't allow this world to distract our purpose in this world, in this life. To go out and to preach and teach those that are lost. To live a decent, clean, and as sin-free life as we can. We're very fortunate and very blessed that we have the avenue of prayer and can ask for forgiveness when we fall short. 1 John 2, 15. You familiar with that? Don't love this world. Don't do it the things in it. There's the lust, of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. If you have those in your life, you are not of the Father. That's pretty bold face, isn't it? This is not me speaking. This is the Scripture speaking. And I'm trying to do my best to convey a thought that we've got to follow God's Word. We've got to enter in heaven. <laughs> this is the one that always gets me. <laughs> I think I said that earlier. She only committed one sin. You wouldn't even think that a sin, though, would you? Just turn around and look at oh, That's not so bad, right? But <laughs> what does God say? Don't turn around. Don't look. But his wife looked back. What happened to her? She became a pillar of salt. Can you imagine that? His wife turning into a pillar of salt. And the daughters thinking what they were thinking. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. James 2.10 Can just one sin cause us to lose our life, our soul? Adam and Eve. What do you think of them? Don't eat of the fruit of good and evil. What did they do? They ate of the fruit of good and evil. 
Did they get an, oh, I'm sorry, God, can we try that again? They were cast out, weren't they? How many chances did they get? No. How many sins were charged against them? One. Nadab and Abihu, Leviticus 10, 1 through 7. What comes to mind there, brethren? They offered strange fire. How many chances did they get? Zero. They lost their life. We can't think that we can do it better than God. This one here, uh, 2 Samuel 6. What caused this to happen? What caused Uzzah to reach up and touch the ark? They weren't carrying the ark the proper way, right? Did Uzzah do a good thing? He reached up and steadied the ark to keep it from falling. What was the commandment? Do not touch the ark. What did Uzzah do? Touch the ark. What happened? I'm sorry, God, I won't do it again. Well, that's right. He won't do it again. He fell over dead, didn't he? Pretty serious, isn't it, coming from the Word of God. Like I say, it's not coming from me. The God is a just God. He's going to treat us all fairly. We've got to understand that. Simon the sorcerer, Simon the magician, in Acts chapter 8. What was going on here? He saw the apostles laying on of hands, doing many wonderful works. And what did Simon the sorcerer say? Hey, I want that. Give that to me. I want some of those gifts. Kind of a good thing came out of this. What happened to him? He was admonished very strongly. You have no part nor lot in this issue. You need to sin from this type of action, this type of question, this type of want to. His response in Acts 8, 24. Pray for me. that I might repent, turn away from. Can you think of others? Moses, what was he told to do? Speak or strike the rock? Speak. What did he do? Strike. What was his punishment? Can't go into Canaan. Ananias and Sapphira, what did they do? They just told a little bitty white lie. What happened to them? They fell at the doorway, didn't they? This, these types of thoughts and these types of actions, particularly the one right here by the others, every time I hear that, he just touches it a little bit. He's gone. One sin. One little thing. Lot's wife perished, although she was the wife of a righteous man, and I think she was righteous. She was trying to do the right thing. Was she warned of the danger? She was warned you need to get out of town, don't look back. She did make an effort to be saved, although she did falter. And she only committed one sin. Remember Lot's wife when you see and hear about these facts. Listen to Jesus. A few simple verses we've heard time and time again. John 8, 24. Therefore I said to you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. Confess. Therefore who is... Whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. 
Matthew 10, 32. Repent. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Be baptized, Mark 16, 15, and 16. Go into all the world and preach to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Are these tough words to hear? Is God's word easy to understand? If it is so easy to understand, why are so many people being lost today? Behold, God, I thought. We prophesied in your name. We worked many things in your name. Depart from me, ye that work what? Without my authority. There is only one God. There's one Jesus, one Spirit. There's one baptism. There's one church. Are you ready to enter in to this one church? Have you heard it? Do you believe it? Do you realize you've got to confess? You've got to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and be baptized for the remission of your sins? I mean, are you ready to come forward today and be baptized? If you're a child of God and you have sinned, today we can have forgiveness. We get that opportunity to turn around and look. Uh Uh-oh, I made a mistake. I need to go forward and I need to make it right. We've got that blessing. We've got that avenue of prayer. And you know I've got to say it one more day. We're one day closer to dying. We're one day closer to going to glory. Are you ready? If not, would you come now as we stand and sing?